Well, here we are again, ladies and gentlemen. It's official. Chelsea have announced France attacking midfielder slash striker Christopher Nkuku. The 25-year-old is a Chelsea player and will be a starter for Maurizio Pochettino's Chelsea. Uh, within the Chelsea evolution, I'm going to remind you why he is a good player, show you some very positive comparative stats, talk about generally his style of play, and how he will be utilised as well as reading Chelsea's statement. So they call this like a little Linkuku special to give you some ideas of, of what to expect. Um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for liking the video. If you want to support the content, you are welcome to subscribe. And should you choose to subscribe, you should hit that sweet, sweet bell, baby. All right, then. Not a moment to waste. Chelsea have announced Nkuku on all their social media platforms with a little video of you know, just images of him and commentary. Of course, he's got that iconic balloon celebration where he puts his arms out and blows a balloon up. Uh, that red balloon celebration, one would assume will turn into a blue balloon celebration. When asked why he does that, he explained his son, I think it's his son, or his kid likes balloons, so he does it for them, which is quite sweet. The simple things in life, eh? So when Cuckoo joins Chelsea, Chelsea say, Chelsea are delighted to announce Christopher and Cuckoo will join the club from RB Leipzig. Uh, the 25-year-old has been capped 10 times by France. Surprised to hear that, um, because, uh, I don't know, I just figured, like, um, I figured it will be more. Uh, I think he's a star for France now. He's certainly an elite gunman. He scores a lot of goals, makes a lot of assists, is a positionally versatile player, which can be a gift and a curse, of course, as we know too well as Chelsea fans. So he signed a six year contract, which will begin in 10 days time. So he's 25, it will take him to 31. It is probably in the sweet spot. This is a good opportunity for him to be financially secure. He was quoted saying this, I am incredibly happy to be joining Chelsea. I assume that someone is holding a knife in his back because he's probably seen the league table. I jest, of course, a wonderful opportunity to follow many other Frenchmen. To, to hopefully have successful careers in Chelsea Blue. A, a successful career. A big effort was made to bring me to the club and I'm looking forward to meeting my new coach uh, and teammates and showing the Chelsea supporters what I can do on the pitch. I have played in Ligue 1 and the Bundesliga. I want to now play in the Premier League, one of the strongest leagues in the world. Uh, pause, Christopher. Chris, if I may. It is, in fact, the strongest league in the world. Having um, having played in Ligue 1 and the Bundesliga, uh, uh, oh, I've just read that. I'm excited for this challenge and will be proud to wear the Chelsea shirt. Oh, like it. Love it. Love it, mate. Uh, Lawrence Stewart and Paul Wynne Stanley, Chelsea's co-sporting directors, said this. Christopher has proved himself one of the standout attacking players in European football over the past two seasons and will add quality, creativity and versatility to our squad. Yes, we will look at that in just a moment. Um, and he has been one of the form players, by the way. You know, despite being injured for two months, he won shared golden boot or the top scorer award in the Bundesliga. He won the Pokal, he plays for France, he's 25, he's good, he's good, and we will see that. Quote goes on, he has demonstrated his ability at the highest level with RB Leipzig and France, and we look forward to him joining up with his new teammates in the new season. So in good, a bit of background here, Nkuku is a graduate from the famed French National Football Academy at Clairefontaine and started his professional career at Paris Saint-Germain. He made 78 first team appearances. I didn't know he made that many appearances for PSG and was involved in three Ligue 1 title wins and two Coupe de France triumphs before departing to RB Leipzig in 2019. It is in Germany that Nkuku built his reputation as one of the finest forwards in European football. True, it's true. He scored 35 goals in all competitions during the 21-22 campaign. That is mental, by the way, for a guy who's not a striker to score 35 goals in all competitions. That is incredible. Um, yeah, and he was named Bundesliga Player of the Season and German PFA Player of the Season. And uh, the DFB Pokal was also won. Incroyable. The, the versatile attacker struck an extra 32 goals this season to help Leipzig secure third place finish and retain the Pokal, which is, of course, the German, the German Cup. Incredible scenes. 35 goals in a season. For, you know, Harry Kane scored 
uh, f- uh, 30 league goals. Or something. He has to, he's just he's popping off. Yes, we've all got PTSD for you know prolific RB Leipzig strikers, but um, this is really really exciting. In the time when we're frightened of losing players or scared of you know Kai Havertz to Arsenal is a big one, we will get not only the money to pay for Nkuku from Kai Havertz sale to Arsenal, but we will make a profit in between and we will get a player that's in more hotter goal scoring form and of similar age, maybe a year older than Havertz or something. Check out this understat comparison between Christopher Nkuku and Kai Havertz. Um, here we go. As you can see, the blue graph, part of the graph here is Kai and Christopher is the green version and every single metric Christopher and Cuckoo is better than Kai. Yes, yes, playing in different leagues. But as you can see, the expected assists per 90 is double. Um, the uh, you know key passes per 90 is significantly more. Uh, XG chain, XG build up slightly more. Goals per 90 is um, is more. I mean, to be honest, I'm surprised Kai's even got one goal and three, to be honest. Um, expected goals per 90 is more, and, uh, you know, assists and everything. Basically, he's just generally better at everything. Um, he's more of a transitional player than Kai. We can trust him to run in behind. We can trust him to combine in between the lines. And we can trust him, much like Kai, to his credit, to be positionally versatile on the pitch. This is not me slagging off Kai Havertz. You all know I'm a big fan of his. But in terms of selling Kai for 60 buying Nkuku for 52 and we're you know getting a player in better goal scoring form should this is obviously it all comes down to what Pochettino thinks does he think this is the appropriate player for him you'd have to say yes um let's quickly talk about his FB ref metrics so basically without trying to sound overly complicated this is his strengths on his scouting report so what he's strongest at um i'm gonna compare him to attacking midfielders because i don't think he's going to play striker for chelsea and ultimately he hasn't really been playing striker for leipzig so he is in the 99th percentile in four metrics so this is the he's the the bit he's at the top of the tree. No one's better than him. The 99th percentile, and that is goals per 90. So on FB Ref, his goals per 90 in this 365 days, so the last year period. So it's different to understat. He has a goal. Um, he has a goal. Well, he has 0.7 goals per game. So that's you know he gets basically nearly one and a half goals every two games which is incredible for attacking midfielders no one's better than him his xg is 0.6 basically so that is also the best the expected goals and the goals no one's better than him he uh, never loses challenges either which is up there penalty kicks one he wins a penalty which is good because we had eden hazard to do it and then to a lesser degree we had timo Werner. he won a lot of penalties for chelsea and we kind of missed that you know, Jack Grealish does it for like City, these sort of players that want to run in the box with the ball at their feet um, and win you penalties, which ultimately win you games. Interestingly as well, I think he is on penalties, but despite that, his non-penalty XG, which is the goals he scores that aren't penalties, he's still in the 98th percentile as well as the non-penalty goal, the 98th percentile. It goes on, he's really, really good, his pass completion's good, his goal-creating actions, he's just got high assist numbers, high goal numbers, high creative numbers, high penalty-winning numbers, and even things like, you know, friggin' passes blocked. He's in the 94th percentile for attacking midfielders, so he works hard. He's in the 93rd percentile for through balls. These are high numbers. On, you know, FB ref, they're like big, big green full bars. Like, he's the best of the best. In terms of offensive metrics, Chelsea need goals, Chelsea need assists, Chelsea need creativity. This is being delivered in the shape of Christopher Nkuku, who is a Chelsea player. Now, I think he's also the perfect profile to be coached by Maurizio Pochettino. I do think Kai is highly a good profile as well, but maybe maybe considering Poch likes transitional, slightly left-hand sided players, it kind of suits Nkuku more. Um, I'm really, really excited. Um, you know, the, the fact how we're probably likely to accept this bid from Arsenal for 60 million. We might even ask for a couple more. We could have Nkuku plus 10 million instead of Kai Havertz. You know, this is something to be excited for. Again, I love Havertz, but we've misused him. It hasn't worked out the way we wanted to. Maybe he makes Arsenal better. We'll deal with that pain 
if and when it comes. But for the moment, just looking at ourselves, we need goals. Of course, we can imagine more creativity coming with Enzo Fernandez playing a little bit more advanced up the pitch. Uh, of course, we'll expect more from coaching from whoever the nine is, whether it's Nicholas Jackson, whether it's Armando Bruya. You'd have to expect the likes of Noni Madueke on the right wing to uh, you know, be a bit more effective in his decision-making, because certainly on the ball, he looks devastating. And hope the likes of uh, Misha Mudrik, you know, does feature for the Ukraine under-21s and finds a bit more form. I know he got a couple of assists um, for the Ukraine senior team as well. He's looking a bit more, you know, um, confident, developing his fitness. People shouldn't forget about Raheem Sterling, who's still only 28, I believe, and will be, you know, excited about this development of Pochettino and will be coached well by him. This is really, really, really exciting for me. Of course, this was announced a long time ago in terms of being a rumor, and you know Romano was talking about it. But for Chelsea to talk about it and um, you know reiterate the exciting you know things about him, him to have quotes, I am buzzing to see this kid in preseason, and it makes me feel better about selling Kovacic and Havertz, and you know maybe Mason Mount. We'll see what happens. Um, but man, I'm feeling really, really good. And I, want, I wanted to do a video reacting to it. So let me know what you think. Um, I can't wait to read your comments. Uh, the metrics are really, really impressive. So hopefully you found that interesting. The comparison and the FB ref uh, stuff that I said, look, you can look for yourself. You just type in, in Cuckoo stats. They're exemplary. They're, immen they're immense. Can he keep up at Chelsea? We'll have to see. But with a settled team, with a new coach, with a collective togetherness, with a developed um, foundational culture built up, he will have a better chance, I think, of developing and doing really well or certainly sustaining his form at Chelsea than perhaps the likes of Kai Havertz did and uh, Timo Werner, who you know struggled when coming into Chelsea. Uh, I did do another video this morning, so feel free to go watch that. I'm popping off loads of content at the moment, so feel free to subscribe and hit the bell notifications icon. I'm out, guys. Take care of yourselves. Bye.